AI takes a lot of power. The International Energy Agency forecasts the global energy demand for crypto and AI will double by 2026. But where's that energy all going to come from? Oklo is creating clean energy from fission reactors. This is where the atom is split in a reactor, and then it might be what eventually powers AI and crypto. Well, at least that's what it's banking on. And it has the backing of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman as its chairman. Joining us from the New York Stock Exchange, we've got Jake DeWitt, who is the Oklo co-founder and CEO. Jake, thanks so much for taking the time. First, just break down for us in a nutshell how this happens. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool, like, right, taking a next generation nuclear technology that has a huge amount of promise and potential uh, that can literally power the planet for, frankly, a billion plus years with proven reserves of materials and technology that's been demonstrated. Something I fell in love with when I was a kid, something that got me really excited to want to work in this space, and it was what led us to start the company back, um, you know, 11 years ago. Uh, and kind of what we're working towards now is, yes. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there, but I'm curious, just, when you take a step back, just talk to us just about the size of this opportunity, especially yes. when you take into account the energy that's going to be necessary to power AI deployment, to power these products that have yet to come online too. Yeah, I mean, it's an uh, it's the, the opportunity set is so huge right now. You've got a couple of things going on too, right? We we obviously talked about the AI piece, which is massive, and that builds on top of the energy transition drive that's happening as we speak, and has been going on for a few years. There's been a lot of excitement about what that looks like as we transition to sort of a cleaner, more sustainable future, and electrifying everything from transit to everything how we heat our homes. And now you have this massive pull on the AI side, and the amount of energy increase, right, on a per AI use. It's still sort of being settled out in a lot of cases, but it's several times larger than just a simple query. And I think as we get more and more use of AI, it becomes more and more generally like accessible. It's only going to increase. Uh, it's such a workforce and sort of productivity multiplier that you need to drive a ton of energy. And what we've seen on the data center side is a massive uptake where they're basically trying to grab all the capacity they possibly can. And there's a lot of interest in saying, hey, well, what can we bring to generate with us? So for example, bringing our reactors, building them next to or with where these data centers are being developed, or in some cases where we're already building, bringing the data centers to build around us. And what's great about that is obviously they'll take the power off, that helps us scale and grow forward uh, and deploy more plants, but also open the door to sort of bring it to other markets as well. Um, but the AI piece is just staggering in the demand. And, and frankly, the numbers are kind of uh, eye-watering in size, and they just keep, like, keep getting bigger. And so with that in mind, what is the revenue model? How, how can Oklo get towards profitability and, and sustain that over time? Yeah, this is a big thing we focused on when we started the company. It wasn't about sort of the traditional model that nuclear has. Mm -hmm. It was about offering something that makes it a lot easier for customers to buy the power they want from nuclear systems. In other words, the clean, reliable, safe power that nuclear naturally produces. Uh, we just wanted to make it easy for them to buy. So we design, own, operate those plants and sell the power through long-term offtake agreements, basically power purchase agreements. Very similar to what you see in a lot of other sort of energy generation technologies, especially renewables. And that allows, for example, a data center company uh, to then enter into a long-term power purchase agreement, buy power from our systems, we'll then build the plant, produce the power, they buy it over often a 20-year period, sometimes more, maybe sometimes less, uh, to power their data center. And then we can add more facilities where we go to support their growth as well. Now that recurring revenue is fantastic because then we can project finance against it, which is huge. Um, and on top of that, we have access to the fantastic investment tax credits that exist all of which are great amplifiers for us, but not entirely needed just to be successful. But it's a big departure from what nuclear's typically done uh, in terms of being what customers want, but also having the benefits on the business side of those recurring revenues from those power sales. And that's a massive differentiator. Right now we stand pretty unique in that space, offering that kind of dynamic. And Jake, what are you hearing just in terms of interest and how those discussions that you're having with the AI and data centers, how those talks are progressing at this point? Yeah, so we're excited. Uh, you know, yesterday afternoon we announced a partnership with uh, Wyoming Hyperscale Data Center Partner. Um, very neat opportunity there as they look at driving high compute density, sort of advanced liquid cooling technologies. One big thing with AI is obviously driving a much higher compute density on a per rack basis at the data center level, which opens the door for a lot of advanced cooling technologies, which actually opened the door for some interesting integrations, not just on the electric power side we can produce. So there's some cool things where you can actually use heat from the system to help drive cooling. Now, that sounds weird. Uh, but it's actually doable. Uh, and combined, those are some really you know, promising features of next generation data centers. So we're excited about that one. We have more in the works. The pipeline has been um, 
very busy for us. Uh, it feels like there's a lot more demand for power than can be brought online. Uh, so I think we're going to have our hands full for quite a long time just meeting the energy needs there. Not to mention all these other opportunities that are coming on, on the broad energy transition piece. The data center side is obviously very, very exciting, but you also have to look at the factory side as we re-industrialize the industrial base in America. They need power to drive these things, including, by the way, making the chips for AI as we look at bringing that chip manufacturing back into the U.S. So there's just a huge amount of opportunity, especially in where we're, have, we're seeing the industrialization occur, especially in states like Texas, for example, or Ohio. Uh, and so we're pretty excited about what that opportunity looks like and are now very happy to uh, basically be on the track to try to build as many things as we can as quickly as we can.